Then what are the risk factors for neonatal sepsis? Separate risk factors have been given. Uh, these risk factors are the ones which are given in the Indian textbooks. So for, for early onset sepsis, the, uh, the chances of infection in the baby are more if the mother is having infection that is maternal chorioamnionitis is there. So maternal fever, prolonged rupture of membrane more than 24 hours, spontaneous labor, difficult labor, more than three pervaginal examinations uh, before delivery and foul smelling liquor. These are the common risk factors which produce which are associated with early onset sepsis. For late onset sepsis, risk factors include prematurity, low birth weight, decreased breastfeeding, needle pricks and use of IV fluids, poor cord care and superficial infections. Now there are some points here that you need to understand. Now if you look at the guidelines, they say that prolonged rupture of membrane more than 24 hours is a risk factor for neonatal sepsis, early onset neonatal sepsis, right? But there is a catch here. According to Nelson as well as Western data, you would know that in Western countries, group B streptococcus is a very common cause of neonatal sepsis. And there is a reason for that. Group B streptococcus is a fairly common commensal oblique pathogen in the genital tract of Western world females. This similar carriage rate has not been found in an Indian setting and that is why in Indian setting, group B streptococcus as a cause of neonatal sepsis is not that common. It can happen, but it is not that common. Now, obviously, if there will be a prolonged rupture of membrane more than 24 hours, there will be a risk of, uh, you know, increased risk of inflammation, increased risk of all the bacteria which are there in the genital tract getting transferred to the baby leading to sepsis. Studies in Western world have shown that in prolonged, uh, in uh, group B streptococcus, that is group B streptococcus, that is streptococcus agalacti. In GBS associated early onset sepsis, prolonged rupture of membrane more than 18 hours is a risk factor. So they say then when you are talking about group B streptococcus associated sepsis, the cutoff should be more, not more than 24 hours, cutoff should be more than 18 hours. The same thing has not been validated in Indian children. It may or may not be there. We don't have studies. But this is an important clue. Nelson clearly says what it, the summary of this is, you take PROM more than 24 hours as a risk factor in any case. But for group B streptococcal infection, you take more than 18 hours as the risk factor. So this is a small little change. Fact mentioned in uh, Western textbooks. You pick any standard Western textbook of neonatology and you will find it mentioned. Nelson also talks about it, right? Now moving further, what are the other additional miscellaneous risk factors? Uh, studies have shown that term male infants are found to have higher risk factor of sepsis. This thing has not been shown in preterm and low birth weight newborns. Term babies, male infants have higher risk than female infants. If in case there are congenital immune defects, it increases the risk of sepsis. Asplenia in, increases the risk of sepsis, galactosemia it increases the risk of sepsis, obstructive uropathy increases the risk of sepsis, preterm and low birth weight newborns are universal risk factor for neonatal sepsis that you need to know. Also remember that presence of omphalitis, omphalitis is inflammation infection of the umbilical stump, fairly common. Omphalitis itself is not included in sepsis but it increases the risk of staph aureus sepsis in the newborns, right? So this is another fact that you need to remember. Moving further, extra edge point, uh, there is a thing called as intrauterine inflammation or infection at birth. 1i, 2i, 3i, also called as triple i. What is this triple i? It is nothing but the currently used terminology for chorioamnionitis. So it is a term which is increasingly being used in place of chorioamnionitis. It is defined by fetal tachycardia, maternal leukocytosis, more than 15,000 cells in the absence of corticosteroids, purulent fluid from the cervical os, biochemical or microbiological amniotic fluid changes consistent with the infection and finally fever which is equal to or more than 39 degrees or equal to or more than 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So the definition of chorioamnionitis has been slightly altered and this is the new terminology which has been used. 
if you look at past papers of neat ss there are questions asked from fetal as well as maternal risk factors related to the child as well and so this is one important fact you need to remember it is mentioned in nelson also it is mentioned in uh, other textbooks also subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder